Now that the electrical is finally upgraded in my garage, we can get to some plasma cutting. Son, grab the plasma torch. This is the Prime Weld Cut 60. This is um, a real nice machine if you're looking to um, do some plasma cutting at home or maybe for a small business. What do we have here? Oh, we have the Prime Weld Cut 60 user manual. It has a lot of useful information there, especially um, some um, cutting specs, I guess, if you want to say. So we'll take a little bit of a look into this later. And uh, here we have uh, box number one. And what do we have here? Okay, so we have a, uh, it's like a face guard, welding mask type thing. So you definitely want to protect your eyes because you only get uh, one pair. So let's go ahead and put this off to the side. And then next we have our grounding clamp. Yep. So if you're going to be uh, cutting anything, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you secure a grounding clamp to it, to the piece that you're going to be cutting. It's pretty rigid or stiff, nice stiff spring. And um, we have a CNC socket. This is actually one of the reasons why I was so interested in this machine. At this price point, it's one of the only machines with it. And here we have a uh, basically a 220 volt to 110 volt power adapter. I won't be uh, using this in this video because I'm only interested in max cutting. And what's in uh, box number two? Well, we have our our plasma torch. It's a very long lead. So, yep, it is the cutting torch IPT60. And um, yeah, it's very flexible. And then we have just a um, couple consumables right here. And that's basically that's all in these boxes. Now this uh this uh, plasma cutter is quite heavy, and I'm struggling a little bit uh, with one leg here. <laughs> Even though I'm sitting down, I uh, I'm all over the place trying to manage this. But I managed to get it unwrapped and set it on the floor here. All right, now let's get it on the welding table. Now let's take a look at the front of the machine. This is the central torch connector. Then we have the work piece connector right here. And up here we have the air pressure regulator. You pull out the knob to adjust it, and uh, we have to make sure it switches on all the way to the right. Here we have our amp control. And then we have our post air flow, and there's the switch I was talking about. And then you have your air pressure gauge. We switch it around, then we have our uh, compressor input, our power on and off then we have our cnc input this is really what i want um yeah so be on the lookout i'll mention what it's going to be used for later on in the video so stay tuned but before we begin we need to get this air compressor ready so right here i have a quarter inch mpt male industrial brass plug and it already has uh some of that uh sealant on the end here. And I'm just going to take my trusty old crescent wrench here and uh, I'm going to tighten it up a bit. You don't want to go too tight, just nice and snug. Now I can actually take my air compressor hose and plug it in. Now let's go ahead and connect the torch. This uh, is pretty lengthy. Um, forgive me, I do not know what the length it is, but it should be good for most of your projects. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and unscrew this cap here. It's keyed, so it can literally only fit in one way. So be gentle. Don't force it. And just plug it in and twist on. Just nice and snug. It is plastic threads. And for a ground clamp, it's the same thing. Or material clamp. It's keyed and just turn it to the right. All done. Finally, after over a year, I have a 220 outlet. Now let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Unfortunately, the power switch is on the back of the machine. It would be nice if it was on the front. Um, and the fan always runs. Take a quick look at the user manual. It has lots of information. You should read it. But uh, a lot of information is on this back page. It's basically how you set your amps, your air settings, as well as how fast you move the torch per the material that you're cutting. Now, to set your air pressure, you're going to Move the switch to set air, pull this knob out, and then you're going to adjust your regulator plus or minus. Now, if it's not moving 
any more to the plus, you may have to adjust it on your air compressor itself. Once you have it set, set the switch to 2T or 4T. Now, I'm going to adjust the amperage up here, but you'll see that I have it on 4T, the switch. You most likely may not have it on 4T. 4T basically means if you're going to um, press the trigger, the torch will stay lit until you press the trigger again. Um, 2T is just normal press and release and turns off. I also decided to run a filter on this. This is a Rockwood uh, half inch MPT two stage air drying system. It has a oil separator as well as a moisture separator. Now it's suggested that running a plasma cutter that you would have some type of filtration system. For the moisture, this uses desiccant packs that could be reused. You're only gonna use one of these. You're gonna unscrew the one side and then only dump one of those desiccant packs in there and then you're gonna screw it back in and then mount it. Now you're gonna have the air compression line going through there and then out will go right into your plasma cutter. It'll definitely prolong the life of your plasma cutters. I am running the minimum requirements, which is a 20 gallon air compressor. This is a Husky silent air compressor. It's not really all that silent, but it gets the job done and for my space requirements, it is what it is. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Well, look no further than PCB Way. Are you looking for just a regular standard PCB? Are you looking for maybe advanced PCBs? Possibly a rigid or flex PCB? Or maybe you just want them to assemble it for you. You need a stencil or a CNC? Maybe some 3D printed parts? PCB Way could do all of that for you. And currently, for the next seven days, after the release of this video, they also are offering some great Christmas sales here. So click on one of these coupons. See uh, if there's any promotions that you might be interested in. I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue on to the Prime Weld Cut 60. But before we begin, we want to make sure that our fur family is not in the garage. Sorry, Bear and Oreo, I'm going to have to kick you out because you're not going to be wearing the proper safety gear to be in the garage with me. We want to make sure that you're wearing like a welding helmet or plasma glasses as well as um, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because you don't want to be breathing in any of these gases. I'll be wearing these number 10 rated uh, safety goggles. Some of people actually recommend like a 5. I just don't see how that's possible. So I'm going with these number 10s. Like I said, I'm not an expert. Now we're going to just uh, cut some quarter inch steel. It's just plain steel. Got this from Home Depot. Our uh, PSI is set to 60. Amps are set to 45. You can adjust everything like I showed you at the beginning. And we're at a 2T. So that way if I press the trigger, it's going to um, engage the torch. And when I release, it's going to turn it off. So it's got that little safety thing right in, in between. So you just move the safety out of the way and then you um, squeeze the trigger. Yes, I'm not wearing gloves. I will fix that later. And I lost my balance. It didn't work, man. I um, having one leg does make things a little bit difficult. Believe it or not, even sitting because I cannot, uh, I kind of sway and I lost my balance. So let's try this one more time. There we go. Very clean cut. It's a little jagged, and that's just because of the way the operator is. It's not the torch, it's me. And you hear the post flow that's going on. That's cool down the tip. So I have it set for like 10 seconds, and my semi silent air compressor is running in the background. Let's try a, uh, another pass, shall we? See if I could uh, do it a little bit better this time around. Don't worry, I'll get those gloves on. I think I'm getting a lot better at this. However, let's try instead of pushing, let's try a pull and see if it works better for me. I definitely think Pushing it, it's a little bit better. 
Now let's try some thicker material. This is an old receiver that I have for my truck. It's rusted and I simply don't trust it anymore. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. Now you want the surfaces to be a little bit clean. It's running at 60 amps, about 70 PSI. And I am standing while doing this. I did clean up some of the rust, but um, just want to see if I could go all the way through. Looks like it's almost doing it. I'm going way too fast and I'm starting to lose my balance. And yeah, I blame this test solely on me. Um, I just not cut out to do this kind of thing, I guess. So let's try something a little bit thinner. 22 gauge sheet metal. Should be able to blow through this with no issue. So let's give it a try. Again, my balance, I just, not the greatest at this. But, as you can see, no problems whatsoever. Now let's uh, cut a hole. Wow, perfectly symmetrical, of course. So I have this um, slat wall, it's by Pro Slat, it's aluminum. I used a jigsaw and a blade in that jigsaw that was meant to cut uh, metal. And I want to see if uh, this plasma cutter can do it. So I originally set the at uh, 50 amps here. And we're going to see if we could um, get a clean cut through it. Now it does have these little support pieces on the bottom here. Or the back. And it's cutting through it with no problem. And I foresee the biggest problem being here is the locking part right here with these valleys. Because the torch just can't really get in there all effectively. And... Yeah, it didn't really do that great of a job. So now we're around 60 PSI at 55 amps. Let's see if we could try to get past that valley on the other end. Because really not having any issue at the beginning here. Even with those uh, support ridges in the back. It's the valleys and that interlock the slat wall together on the top here that I'm having a problem with. So we're going to get to that valley there. And I uh, kind of lose my uh, grip there on the trigger. So I'm going to try to pick up and try it again. I'm trying to see if uh, that uh, torch gets all the way through. I'm judging it by that. And now we're going to increase the PSI to 70 and amps at 60. This is total overkill for aluminum of this thickness, but it's that end that I'm just trying to cut through. And plus, I really don't have much more metal material in my house to really do testing with. So I figured this would be interesting and to see if it would have done a better job than a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. And there we go. Not the cleanest cut. You can do it, but jigsaw wins. How does this uh, prime weld cut 60 work? <laughs> Absolutely it does. This is uh, definitely where um, Having one leg and balance has a huge impact of the cut quality of the operator. <laughs> but, like I said, I was interested in this machine because of one thing and one thing only at the price point was this is the least expensive plasma cutter with CNC operation built right into it. So, what does that mean? Well, I'm really not going to be using this as a hand cutting torch. I'm going to be attaching this to a Arcdroid CNC plasma cutter. I backed this Arcdroid back in February of this year. I'm now finally getting to unbox it and get to use it. So be on the lookout for this prime weld to be attached to this Arcdroid CNC in the near future videos. And I just cannot wait to be able to use this and see what creations I can make with it and how accurate this combination will be. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage. <laughs>